What's up everybody, my name is Eric. Welcome to my channel, Eric the Tutor. Today, we're gonna talk about the brachial plexus and the blood supply to the upper limb. All right, so we talked about the brachial plexus before, but we're just gonna kinda go through it, ask a lot of questions, talk about all the innervations, and add a different layer with the blood supply, okay? So let's get started. Um, make sure you guys have a drawing like this out and be ready to add notes to it. Um, or just be ready to quiz yourself, okay? We're gonna be going through all the nerves, all the innervations, all the branches, the trunks, everything coming off of this, and arterial supply. So just make sure you have this in front of you, okay? All right, so we start with our C5, C6, C7, C8, and our T1. These are the ventral rami that are coming off of the spinal cord, okay? So these are the rami, all right? Now if we move over, we have here, we have our upper trunk, our middle trunk, and our lower trunk. Then we move on to our divisions. For our divisions, we have three anterior and we have three posterior, okay? So we see an anterior division here, another anter anterior division there, a third anterior division here. Then we have three posterior, one here, one there, and a third right there, okay? So those are all our branches. Now we move on to our lateral cord and our posterior cord and our medial curve. Uh, cord okay so those are the cords now we're gonna move on to the branches so let's get these labeled over here on the most lateral side we have which nerve what do you guys think this is gonna be the musculocutaneous nerve okay we have the musculocutaneous nerve now how do we know it's the musculocutaneous nerve? When we're looking at it in lab, we need to know for certain that it's the musculocutaneous. So I like to try to find that M, for sure find that M, the outermost lateral to the axillary artery is gonna be our musculocutaneous. You can check and see that it pierces through our coracobrachialis, okay? So it's gonna go through the coracobrachialis. If it's not there, then it's gonna go into the anterior compartment of the arm because we know the musculocutaneous supplies innervation to the entire anterior compartment of the arm, okay? Next, we have this middle one here. So this is gonna be our median nerve. Let's just say it comes all the way down here. Let's say this is our, let's say we're looking at it from the anterior side. So this is an anterior, anterior left. Okay, anterior left upper limb, all right? So now let's say down here, this was our median nerve, right? So I'll put here two median nerve. Another way to check is, so if this was our forearm, right? This is our forearm here. Let's say this is our forearm, just like this, something like this, right? We know we're gonna have on the, on the medial side, what are we gonna have? We're gonna have the, just rough drawings of our bones here. Okay, here's our humerus. On this side, we're gonna have our ulna. Okay, this is our ulna, ulna. And then over here, we have our radius, okay? So I know when I see the median nerve, I know it runs down here and it goes through my entire forearm. It's gonna supply the these three, these three digits, right? So let's see. So it's actually going to supply the outermost digits, right? These three. We know these three are going to be for the median nerve, and the innermost are going to be the ulnar nerve, okay? So these three, median, these two, ulnar, okay? All right, so two we said was our median nerve. Um, we also know that our median nerve runs through where? In the forearm. In the forearm, we know it's deep to our flexor digitorum superficialis, and it is superficial to our flexor digitorum profundus, okay? So we have flexor digitorum superficialis, our median nerve, we have our flexor digitorum profundus, and then we have our flexor pollicis longus. All of that is going through the forearm, right? Going through the forearm, through down here, through the flexor retinaculum, flexor retinaculum, which is just the fascial sheath that these travel under, okay? Um, so that those are the 10, we have nine tendons running through and we have one nerve, that's our median nerve, okay? So there's our median nerve. 
Now let's talk about this one down here. Here's our ulnar nerve. This is ulnar, right? And I know it's gonna pass through on the medial epicondyle, right? It's gonna pass through on the posterior side of my medial epicondyle, okay? And then I know it's gonna run through here, okay? So let's label that one, number three. Three, this is our ulnar nerve, okay? Remember, I know it's ulnar because it's gonna run posterior, it's gonna run on the back side on the medial epicondyle, okay? Medial epicondyle. And then it's gonna come through the back side here and it's gonna run just deep, just deep to my flexor carpi ulnaris, okay? My flexor carpi ulnaris. Carpi ulnaris. If I remove the flexor carpi ulnaris, I can see my ulnar nerve running. Okay, perfect. So now we got those three down. Okay, now let's talk about these ones up here, right? So this is coming off of my posterior cord, posterior because it's posterior to the axillary artery. I have my posterior cord right here, and I know it splits. Okay, so this is a really important one. It's going to run deep, it's going to run deep, and this is going to go in to my into my axilla right it's going into the armpit so it kind of disappears and it runs deep okay so this one here let's put let's say it runs deep into there right we'll put four okay so this is my axillary which which blood supply, so which artery, runs parallel with the axillary nerve, okay? When it dives deep into the axilla, the posterior humeral circumflex runs parallel with my axillary nerve. So I know if I'm looking for blood supply, I can see my posterior humeral circumflex and I can confirm that when I see it running with my axillary nerve, okay? And just to distinguish that and the anterior humeral circumflex um, artery, I know that one is just superior. It's not quite diving down as much. It's just superior and it's a little bit thinner as well. Okay, and it's also not running parallel with my axillary nerve. Okay, axillary nerve. Now we have this one here. So we have our musculocutaneous, our median, our ulnar, and our axillary nerve. Um, the last one we want to talk about here, this is our radial nerve, okay? So you notice, if this is my arm, right? This is my arm, and down here is my forearm. If I'm looking at the arm, I know that my radial nerve comes off of the posterior cord, so I'll trace it back up just to confirm that this is the radial nerve, and I will see, ah, do I see the posterior cord? Yes. Do I see the split between the... Uh, the axillary nerve and the radial nerve. Oh, I know where my axillary nerve is. This has to be my radial nerve, okay? So this is number four here. This is going to the posterior compartment of the arm. Oh, this is gonna be number five. Number five, okay? And over here we had number four, okay? Here's number five. So this is gonna be my radial nerve, all right? and. What does the radial nerve innervate? It innervates the entire posterior compartment of the arm, so all the triceps, three heads, and the posterior compartment of my forearm, okay? So I know my radial nerve runs through just like that, and it kind of disappears behind the triceps back there, okay? So that's, a, that's an important landmark. Okay, so some other nerves. So let's talk about it, right? So I've seen quite a different, you know, many pro sections, and we have to be familiar with all the branches coming off of the brachial plexus. So what comes off of C5? What do you guys think? C5 here. Let's call it number six here. Coming off of C5 of the ventral rami, we expect to see the dorsal scapular nerve, which... Which muscles does the dorsal scapular nerve innervate? Dorsal scapular nerve. Okay. It's going to be levator scapulae, rhomboid major, and rhomboid minor. Okay. Now, 
if I were to see that in lab, you want to see that it's heading in the posterior direction. I've seen one of the prosections, it's actually attached to the levator scapulae. Okay, so it's actually attached to the levator scapulae. Um, I'm sure it's attached to the rhomboids, but I can see my dorsal scapular nerve going a little bit posterior, running on the back side, and attaching to my levator scapulae. Okay, and I know that is just above my my scapular spine and my scapula. Okay, so that's my dorsal scapular nerve. Okay, we also have a branch coming off of the upper trunk. Okay, here's my upper trunk. Now, what do you guys think is coming off the upper trunk? Let's see. So we just said we had dorsal scapular nerve. This one runs through. So let's let's label this number seven. Number seven. This one runs through the sca the scapular notch or the foramen, right? Um, again, I saw a pro section where this is actually going right through that notch. It's incredible. So this is our supra scapular nerve. Which muscles does the suprascapular nerve innervate? Suprascapular nerve. It's going to be the supraspinatus and the infraspinatus. Okay, so that's the suprascapular nerve. You can spot it because it's coming off of the upper trunk, the upper trunk which is made up of C5 and C6, ventral rami, and it's kind of heading posterior, right? Because it's got to go on the supraspinatus and the infraspinatus, and it's going through that notch. Right, so you want to look on the anterior side, you can see it disappear, and then look at it from the posterior side, and you can see it reappear and go into the supraspinatus and infraspinatus. Okay, that's suprascapular nerve. Um, we have another one here, so coming off of C5, let's see, we have C5, C6, C7. What do you guys think this is? Yep, this is our long thoracic nerve. Okay, and which muscle does the long thoracic nerve innervate? Long thoracic nerve. Yep, you guys got it. It innervates the serratus anterior. What's the blood supply that goes to the serratus anterior? It's the lateral thoracic artery, not the long thoracic nerve, right? Long thoracic nerve innervates the serratus anterior. Lateral thoracic artery is what gives blood supply to the serratus anterior. So they're pretty similar in name, but they're different, right? And how do we recognize our, our lateral thoracic nerve? What do you guys think? Well, when you see it in lab, try to visualize, right? It's usually coming off the second part of the, uh, of the axillary nerve. I'm sorry, of the axillary artery, right? A um, lot of variation, but we would tend to see it coming off the axillary artery and going straight to the serratus anterior so we can find our lateral thoracic artery. And it's running really closely with our long thoracic nerve, so make sure not to mix those up, okay? Um, but you would note that the long thoracic nerve is the nerve and not the artery because if you trace it back, you can see it coming off of the ventral rami, right? Not tracing it back and hitting an artery, hitting the axillary artery, okay? Okay, so we did long thoracic nerve. Um, Let's see what else we can do here. Let's talk about a little bit of blood supply. So um, over here, we said right here, number four, um, this was our axillary nerve. Like I was saying earlier, so let, let's, let's try to draw, let's try to draw our axillary artery here. So we'll do it in orange, okay? Say it's coming on here somewhere out here, right, is our axillary. Let's just say it's running like this, okay? Here we go. Perfect. Okay, so this is, eventually becomes the brachial artery, okay? So let's say, um, let's say that this is our axillary artery, okay? And we know superior to that, right? More proximal, somewhere in this region, we'd expect to see our subclavian artery. Subclavian artery. Uh, this 
picture is not exactly drawn to scale, but we have the subclavian artery until we hit the first rib. And then we know that's our landmark, that we are now at the axillary artery. The axillary artery continues down until we hit the inferior angle of the scapula or at the, the origin for the teres major. That's another way to determine, okay, we're no longer axillary artery, now we are brachial artery. So down here, we're brachial artery, okay? And then we know in the cubital fossa, right, the cubital fossa is in this region here, what makes up the cubital fossa, okay? So let's try to draw a little bit of the cubital fossa. So let's say um, this is my condyles. Let's do something like this and this, right? So since this is a left arm, then I know uh, the cubital fossa is made up of the pronator teres and the brachial radialis. Okay, so the pronator teres is more medial. So this is probably my pronator teres. What else makes up the cubital fossa? Pronator teres, and we have our brachial radialis. Okay, so our brachial radialis is on this side. All right, there's our brachial radialis. We know very superficial, we have our cephalic vein. So let's say here we have our cephalic vein. Cephalic vein. On the medial side, we expect to see our basilic vein. Okay, so we have basilic vein. Um, as it travels more proximally, the basilic vein uh, becomes brachial vein. Up here in the axilla, it's our axillary vein. And way up here, same with way up here, um, it, it actually meets with our actually meets with our cephalic or axillary and we have our subclavian vein, okay? All right, and then, so if our brachial artery splits, right, let's say our brachial artery splits. So it's gonna split a little bit after, so let's say this comes in here, it's gonna split after just like this, okay? So another piece that makes up the cubital fossa is the brachial artery, okay? Brachial artery makes up cubital fossa and the median nerve, the median nerve as well, okay? And we know that our cephalic vein and our basilic vein are connected through the median cubital. Median cubital, okay? And then when our brachial artery split, at the very bottom of our cubital fossa, we know it's split laterally to and medially, right? So our brachial artery, our brachial artery split and ended up becoming our ulnar and our radial. So the radial artery goes on the, the lateral side and our and our medial side we have the ulnar artery, okay? And we know the, the, the radial artery goes on further and, and ends up traveling towards the snuff box, right? So we can actually take our pulse. When we take our pulse um, in the wrist, we can expect to see our radial pulse, okay? All right, guys. So we have quite a bit to go here, but we'll go ahead and do another video, okay? Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.